Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and I am Joy, and this is my beloved husband, Jim, and we are your hosts for today's show, and we are going to have a wonderful Amen. show for you, extremely informative. You're not going to want to miss it. You are an important part of the family, and you know we want to hear from you. So send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com. Calm. Well, sweetie, I know that there's some wonderful things you wanted to share in reference to our guest I'm today. I'm just thrilled to have Dan Burke with us um, and his work in Catholic spirituality, uh, mystical spirituality, several books that he's written, especially navigating the spiritual life, his work with the Catholic Register. So it's just wonderful to always share with him. And just thinking about Catholic spirituality, he does a lot in the area of spiritual direction. He's got some incredible websites we're gonna hear about. And I just thought, wow, spirituality and direction and so on. And I thought about spousal spirituality. And that's just been so critical you know, in our lives. I mean, you're the favorite person I want to go to and, and pray with. And I was just thinking, of underlining to all those who are married, those considering marriage. I know it's hard for those who are widowed because you heard about that, but hopefully in that spousal spirituality, you were also prepared to live alone and mm -hmm. to know that you're wedded to Jesus. But you know what we experience, we being married couples in the sacrament of marriage, you can't get that any place else. I don't care who you pray with. It could be Pope Francis. Pope Francis isn't going to give me what we've got. When I come to you in prayer and you with me, we're, we're in the sacrament. I mean, our marriage is a sacrament. Christ has invaded our beings, our bodies, and his manifest presence is being made known in our marriage. Mm. I can't get that anyplace else. Nobody could do for me what you do for me in terms of prayer. And so I just wanted to underline that with all that Dan's going to be sharing about. And, and you do need spiritual direction with other people. We do need to be with other people. I would love to be with Pope Francis and have him pray for me. Right. But I'm just kind of underlining that the main place where I'm nourished with another human being is in the sacrament of my marriage. And to pray together, to read scripture together, to learn about the saints, or maybe not together, but we come together and we share right. about it every day. I mean, do you understand what you have in your marriage? The power uh, that is loose? Are you working the sacrament? Is the sacrament working you in your marriage? Because I could tell you, you know, when you pray for me, demons flee. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I've sensed oppression and this and that. I've asked people to pray and so on. But when you pray, you might not even know. You, know, you pray for me, I am so blessed and so moved and there's so much power that sometimes it's almost frightening. But that's because it's a sacrament. Right. I haven't made a commitment with another person for better or worse, for richer or poor, in sickness and health, to love and to cherish until we're parted by death, to be faithful, fruitful, right? Right. So I'm just saying spousal spirituality is absolutely incredible, and I wanted to underline that. Well, <laughs> you did that really All well, right. but it is so important. You say, well, you know, and we get lots of emails from people thinking like this is an unrealistic relationship. Well, Jim and I are just ordinary people, right. and you know, we're really strong people. And um, the, I think the two things that we do well in our marriage is we die to ourselves mm -hmm. daily. And I don't know about anybody else out there, but you can't die to yourself daily unless you're loving the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because it's like that attitude's got to go. That selfishness has to go. That prayerlessness has to go. Um, and it's about sacrifice. And it's about commitment. And people think like... Uh, you get this. You don't get this unless you pray every single day. And that's one thing that we've done a lot of things wrong in our lives. Made a lot of mistakes. Made a lot of poor life choices. But the one thing we did do was we prayed every single day. Every day. We're still praying. We're alive. We're still praying. <laughs> and we, we, yeah. we pray in the morning and we pray at night. And I can't tell you the power that we have over each other, that you have over me. I feel deeply resolved in my spirit knowing that I've been blessed by you. 
yes. that day in a good way. Well, God's given us everything that we need in the sacrament. We just have to activate that, mm -hmm. and prayer really does that. Why don't you share about Dan Burke? Okay, well, we're going to have a wonderful guest. He is the executive director of the National Catholic Register, that fabulous newspaper that I hope is coming to your house every single day, the, every week as it comes out, the president of the Avila Institute. He's also the author of a great book, Navigating the Interior Life, and other great books and they're all available at EWTNRC.com. Now, we had Dan on radio. Right. We had, and Dan's been on, I know, Jeanette's show and I know he's been on Father Mitch, but today he's going to be on At Home with Jim and Joy. You're not going to want to miss this interview. So sit back, relax, don't go away. We will be right back. back where you are at home with Jim and Joy and today we bring to you Mr. Dan Burke and he's written a wonderful book. It was number one, right? Yeah. It beat out one of the Pope's books. It's, it's totally problematic. My, my, one of my favorite <laughs> writers of all time is Pope Benedict and, and yeah, it, it won the Reader's Choice Award. It beat out infancy narratives, but I actually am somewhat ashamed of it. I always tell people the Pope's book is way better than my book. But I was very uh, honored to be on a list with Pope yeah. Benedict. What so an odd beautiful. dilemma. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, he's written a fabulous book, one of his many books, and it's called Navigating the Interior Life. And you can get that book. It's item number 55865. Just go to EWTNRC.com or call one 800 854 6316 Maybe you would like to take an interior journey of your spiritual life. So who are the mystics? What am I doing? What's going on in my life? Do I need spiritual direction? Dan is the man. So, Dan, <laughs> we want to welcome you to At Home with Jim and Joy, and thanks for coming on over. It's great to be with you guys. It was easy for you to do because you work here, too. I do. I just what, left my office. You and just walked a hallway. That's right. That Not is, a big trek. There you go. Didn't get wet in the rain. Or the, yeah. Poor Dr. Hahn, he did. Well, anyway, what we want to talk about is about your life who you are, how you got to be here, being the executive director of the National Catholic Register, and all of your gifts and talents that you bring here to the network well, and beyond. And beyond, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, my life as a Catholic has just been an extraordinary journey, and I, and I, I can't even, I, I couldn't have imagined it before my conversion, and God has just taken me on a kind of a rocket ship journey. And many times I've looked around, with archbishops and you know and being in special places and thinking how the heck did a Jewish mm -hmm. kid you know uh, from a dysfunctional family mm -hmm. end up in with all of these wonderful people mm -hmm. and uh, so I've been yeah just deeply blessed and and uh, as I mentioned I, I was brought up uh, Jewish my primary identity is Jewish my father was agnostic but my mother was Jewish and you know we we use a dreidel and uh, and and celebrate Hanukkah every mm -hmm. year and and Passover some years, and I, we have some Orthodox in our family. A little, uh, God rest their soul, Aunt Sadie and Uncle High with their mm -hmm. Uncle High with his big black hat. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and uh, but um, my home life was incredibly tumultuous and uh, painful, um, b multiple divorces, abuse, and that sort of thing. And at a young age, I I really came to a point where I'd considered taking my life, if I unless. I, you know, with the idea that if I couldn't figure out a reason for this, this radical turmoil within me and the suffering that I couldn't see an end to, I thought, well, why should I continue, mm -hmm. you know? And of course, we all know what happens when you cry out to God when, when you come to those places and you're ready to hear the truth. God began to slowly and, and over a very long period of time unveil the reality first of who is Jesus and helping me through wonderful uh, friends to come to uh, a relationship with Jesus as an evangelical. And then ultimately, uh, I'm, I'm a, a reader and a studier and, you know, 
and, and uh, uh, I used to read a book a week, I think, around mm -hmm. that time, mm -hmm. and uh, read my way in so many ways into the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. through the mystical tradition. But that's kind of a, a, a real summary. I came in in 2005, and uh, I was blessed uh, to come in at Our Lady of Foxfield in Parker, Colorado, mm -hmm. under Archbishop Chaput and, and a wonderful uh, Episcopalian priest mm -hmm. who was converting at the time mm -hmm. and helped me come into the church, wow. you know. And so uh, God really has taken me on quite a roller coaster ride, but I, I'm so grateful to be a Christian, so great to be grateful to be Catholic Amen. and to be in, the, in His church. Amen. Um, on this journey, which it, it seems terrible, you, you said it so quickly, and I know yeah. it's so much that's in there. Thinking about your works, navigating the spiritual life, yeah. uh, these 30-day books with various saints, your website, spiritualdirection.com, the Avila, because it's Dash Institute, is that uh -huh. what it is? Okay. Um, it seems like, from what I can read and what you say, it's in the mystical tradition tradition a lot of that yeah well it, was that a part of your own coming into the faith yeah the mystics? exactly well so uh, as I came into relationship with Christ it was like you guys you know it was transformative mm -hmm. and it was real and it wasn't just an idea or an ideology or a philosophy it was a real encounter with God but as is normal with everyone who takes their spiritual life seriously I ran into difficulties in prayer and I read I worked at a, a Christian book chain at the time and uh, I read probably every single book uh, on, on the Protestant prayer. realm mm -hmm, on prayer, mm -hmm. but really did not find any of the answers. Mm -hmm. One day I stumbled. Uh, this wonderful evangelical man had compiled uh, a bunch of Catholic uh, uh, um, content, and he decatholicized it, <laughs> which isn't so good. Mm -hmm. But he took out Saint, you know, Teresa of Avila was Teresa de Ahumada, which was her uh, name right. before mm -hmm. it was, she was professed. Wow. Uh, and removed father, or if they were there, or sister, and but but uh, offered me this incredible wisdom that I could accept because I wasn't friendly to the Catholic faith mm -hmm. at that time, and I was amazed by the writings. I realized I, I came to learn what aridity is and mm -hmm. dryness in prayer, the absence of the presence of the mm -hmm. Lord, that He's not really absent, you right. know, but it's just a time of purification. So that kind of drew me in. I, I eventually discovered. Uh, through my sort of normal studious uh, routes, who these people were, and uh, began reading St. Teresa of Avila before I converted. And that, that just, uh, whenever I read Teresa, and we all have saints like this who mean so much to us, she's my confirmation saint. Whenever I read Teresa, I, I get consolations. I, mm -hmm. I feel the presence of the mm -hmm. Lord. I feel like I'm entering into kind of a heavenly reality yes. with, with whatever it is she's talking about. And uh, so on a, a funny little twist, so in, in uh, 2005, I was going through our CIA and I was uh, watching everybody take communion every Sunday. And I was, mm. I had by that time totally believed, of course, as a high Catholic Anglican, yeah. I, I believed, I had a stronger sense of, 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 the, of the, the Eucharist, presence. even yeah. though it wasn't right. valid in, in right. our tradition right. prior, but I had a strong sense of that reality and the importance of communion. Well, coming to the Catholic Church, I was ready, you know, I, w I was cooked pretty quick. Mm -hmm. This is the body, blood, soul, mm -hmm. and divinity. I so get I, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I walked out of RCIA one day, or out of Mass one day, and I went to the lady who's head of the thing, and I said, look, I'm cooked. I believe in the magisterium. This is Jesus' church, and I want to take communion. Right. That's what I really want, and I really would rather not to go back to RCIA. Mm -hmm. So on the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, I was conceived received and confirmed, not conceived, mm -hmm. received and confirmed mm -hmm. in the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. which is a Carmelite, of course, uh, solemnity. And I did not plan that. Uh, mm -hmm. wow. So God had a kind of a path for me in Carmelite spirituality that he set a mark on me mm. really from the day I came into the wow. church. And that's so that's so a little beautiful. bit of my interest in the mystical tradition. That's where it came from. Yeah. When you say mystical tradition, I mean, what, what does that mean, mystical? I mean. Yeah. Can Protestants what, 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 what be mystical? <laughs> well, that's that's a thorny <laughs> question, but certainly the mystical just mystical theology, for instance, is a theology of encounter. Mm -hmm. okay. So you have moral and dogmatic theology about you know this is a sin and this is an ought and and this is how we understand the challenges of our time and and all of these things. But mystical theology is a theology of encounter. It's how it is that we come 
to ever more deeply grow in our love relationship with God and then in, in and through that live out that love with others. So when we think of the word mysticism, we can think of it, a good word to think of is encounter mm -hmm. and the, the mystics are those saints who had profound encounters with God. Uh, I think that uh, Mother Teresa will be a, named a saint someday. She mm -hmm. obviously had those profound right. encounters which resulted in this great uh, and wonderful work of EWTN. But those, those people, as they write and experience the Lord in these special ways, can reveal the path to us or illumine the path, make it more bright and more clear for us yeah. so that we can come to know and love the Lord in a more powerful way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that term encounter seems to be so pronounced. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, beginning with St. John Paul mm -hmm. II, he seemed to really talk a lot about encounter and then Pope Benedict and Francis is speaking about that. And I guess there's a whole philosophy, a school of personalism, maybe right. that, that's a part of it as well. Um, and I, I guess there's a lot of evangelicals that could relate to this because they always speak about a personal relationship with Jesus. And this encounter seems to be understanding that the Lord is a person. He wants to manifest himself to us and we need to encounter him and give ourselves to him, that realm of faith. Yeah. Yeah, your quote, your, he wants to manifest himself to us, of course, comes from John chapter 14. Mm -hmm. And he says, and just to summarize it in a Jewish mind, if you live in this covenant of love with me, it means I'm the only one. Right. There's no other God. Right. I mean, it's just like in a beautiful marriage. Right. If you live in this covenant of love, you live within the boundaries and the gifts and the graces that I've established for you, I will manifest mm -hmm. myself to you. Mm -hmm. The Father and I will d come and dine with, mm -hmm. with you. We will make our abode with you. What does that mean, right? Mm. Yeah. The, the, what it means is, is that he didn't just ascend and that's it and we wait and we, we die, but he is with us, he's present to us if we will engage with him right. in prayer and in the sacraments foundationally and then prayer, mm -hmm. uh, he will reveal himself to us. He will draw near to us, as St. James says, uh, as we draw near to him. Mm -hmm. So these, the mystical tradition speaks of various people, good souls, saints, yeah. and their encounters with the living God. Um, how do we know their encounters are valid, true? A lot of people having a lot of encounters. How's yeah. that tested? That's a great question. So when we talk about the mystics, we're usually talking about the mystical doctors of the church or the spiritual doctors mm -hmm. of the church. And these are all been tested okay. and, and tried right. and, and shown to be saints, first of all. Mm -hmm. And then also their writings elevated to a status that are good for the church of mm -hmm. all time. And so those are people like St. Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, Francis de Sales, Catherine of Siena. Mm -hmm. So that's, the, that's where we draw our, mm -hmm. our mystical tradition mm -hmm. from. Yeah. Now you, you were sharing that um, you were cooked. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm coming in, into the faith. I believe in the, the real presence of Jesus. I believe in the magisterium. We're getting ready for a break, so we're going to go to the break. But I want to continue to make that connection between encounter, mysticism, charisms, and, and did your study of these people bring it, were they speaking about those things, of, of the Eucharist and about the magisterium, how that all kind of fits together? Yeah. Speaking with Dan Burke, we'll be right back. Please don't go away. about Catholic spirituality, about the mystical tradition and all the great books that he has and resources uh, on, on the web. And so Dan, we were sharing right before the break, you know, the concern for me is you've got the stream of what I would call like mystical or charismatic. Right. Like, get charisms moving upon people. Okay, they've been affirmed as saints mm -hmm. after the fact of all this sure. has taken place. And then you've got this structure and apostolic tradition and mm -hmm. hierarchy and bishops and priests being appointed. How does that work together? Do, do, do they feed each other? How does it work? Well, a mystical tradition and even the way that we live out our faith, may it, be it in special charisms or whatever, always has to be rooted and aligned in, with the magisterium. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that we discern whether or not, as you say, there are encounters in people who claim certain things, one of the ways we discern whether or not it's true is are they in submission to the church? And if right. you look at the spiritual doctors of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, 
uh, Teresa of Avila in particular, uh, and John, but lived during the Inquisition, and, and she was investigated at one point. And she was very clear in her writings, as, as are all the saints, that we, you know, what, is, what it is that we believe uh, must be in submission to the church. And mm -hmm. she says even explicitly that if, there, if you find anything in my writings that are not in keeping with the church, I'll, I'll change it. Right. You know, I live and die for the church. Mm -hmm. So the authenticity and the proper expression of charisms always comes on a foundation of submission to the church. Why is that? Is it just because we're, you know, kowtowing to some hierarchy and, and that's what lets us do what we want to do? Mm -hmm. That's not the issue. It's because we as Catholics believe that the Holy Spirit has never taken a nap. He's, he doesn't take <laughs> vacations. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's always been active in the church yeah. since the day that, that Christ established it at Pentecost. And since then, and until now, he's always guided and led us and gives us these faithful witnesses mm -hmm. of people who live out that faith mm -hmm. in a way that we can emulate. You remember in, in St. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Well, mm -hmm. of course, that's just what a saint is, is someone right. who just did that really, really well. So uh, all of yeah. these things work together in the sense that they are the work of the Holy Spirit and we test them. Um, one by submission. If yeah. you want to test a prophet, mm -hmm. first thing the church will ever do, if you ever see people in our time who have who claim mystical traditions, one of the first things a bishop will do when they begin to get involved is say, stop. Right. Stop speaking publicly. Stop doing what you're doing. And you can, that's when you lean in and you watch. Right. Because if they don't stop, you know there's a problem. Right. Or if they weasel around it or they find some other excuse mm -hmm. to keep going, you should be suspicious of it. If they stop and are submissive, then you get the sense that probably it's more likely that the Spirit of God is working in this charism that's emerging and mm -hmm. that it's holy and good. Mm -hmm. And that's where you, you know, God always does this. The church does this to us. He offends our minds and reveals our hearts. Right. So am I in submission? Mm -hmm. Can I be humbled in this way? Right. Can I believe that it has nothing to do with me? Right. And this all has to do with God. And if I'm in a season of sitting, then sit I will. Exactly. Because it's all about obedience and exactly. love for God. If God's given you gifts and talents, he's going to use them. And, if, and the whole thing is about authority and obedience. Mm -hmm. And that's where that gets revealed. And so that's really important because, you know, we... For me, I mean, we were full-blown, you know, charismatic. We were evangelical. We were, you know, manifesting lots of gifts and talents and everything. When I came to the Catholic Church as a convert, the one word that came home, I mean, like, really, really large, was safe. Interesting. This place was safe. Because you could discern, because you had a method of discernment, a structure to it. And right. also because because we were charismatic and we're still charismatic, sure. I understood that the Catholic Church had a charism that the others didn't. Right, right. So I, I deduced it through being charismatic to say, there's a charism there to keep it, right. the, the teaching to up, you know, upright the ship. We can't upright the ship where we are because we don't have the charism. Right. So it's not just structure absent of charisms. That structure and the apostolic is all come from... In service it, to charism, yeah. really. Yes. It's in service. The structure is really, in a sense, a servant to the work of the Holy Spirit and the Lord, you know, pouring himself yeah. out it's beautiful. in and through the church. It's beautiful. And it's so freeing. Yeah. It it's is. safe and free. And you can be as holy as you want to be. <laughs> there you go. I mean, no limits to holiness. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, isn't that amazing? <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go straight to an email. And the email is this. There are so many Catholic authors out there, and it's hard to know who I can trust. How do I know who's orthodox and faithful and who, and who I should stay away from? And this is from Kevin. Are you offering anything regarding spiritual direction? Yeah, that's <laughs> you three books sitting here. You know, really, uh, let's just start with EWTN. Uh, EWTN, if you want to find a book on any spiritual topic, EWTN Religious Catalog is a little bit of a safe haven because all of the books and the authors have been vetted by our theology department. So there, there are little pockets of faithfulness like that. You know, you have uh, Scott Hahn who runs Emmaus Road Press that's published a, a handful of my books, very faithful institution, Ignatius mm -hmm. Press. So really, I, the way I kind of do that is I go to the publishers who are un, 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 uh, unequ unequivocally devoted to right. the magisterium. And solid. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and so you can trust them. Ignatius Press, Sophia Institute Press who just published Mother Angelica's 
right. uh, uh, book right. on prayer, mm -hmm. which everybody should should mm -hmm. buy. And it's available at the religious catalog. But that's really where I would go: is these trusted organizations like EWTN, and then trusted publishers who are really just doing a great job because their hearts are aligned with the magisterium. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us how and what you have, because at the beginning of the show you were saying, hey, you know, I was a Jewish guy growing up, and now I come into this tradition, I can't believe what God's doing, and I find myself with bishops or cardinals and all this. How is it that your services, like spirituality, what, what's the website? SpiritualDirection.com. SpiritualDirection.com, the Avila Institute, Institute yeah. all that's up there. How is it that that wasn't all there. Like, I mean, this has been around for thousands of years, what you're saying, why hasn't it been accessible? Yeah, that's a great question. What I found when I became Catholic, so I, part of my journey coming into the, coming to Christ initially was through the New Age movement. My mother was Jewish, but also involved in occult stuff and New Age stuff. And so I had some exposure and interest in, you know, I was looking for answers and I didn't know where to go. And when I became Catholic, uh, I, re, I, I was very dismayed, frankly, that there are a lot of um, non-Christian Eastern spirituality had made its way into the church through some false, well, good intentions, but false interpretation mm -hmm. of Nostra Tate, which is a document on ecumenism from the Second Vatican Council. And, 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 I, and I found a lot of Catholic spirituality was mixed with a lot of junk. So other than places like EWTN, which I don't think, I mean, I, I think I was aware, but what I wanted to do is create a site that specialized in disseminating faithful Catholic spirituality mm -hmm. in whichever tradition, because all the traditions are beautiful. You know, uh, EWTN has risen up out of a Franciscan tradition, but we have a Jesuit who leads, you know, right. e e EWTN mm -hmm. Live, and, and we, we have Benedictines that come mm -hmm. through. So I wanted to, to, to show to the world, look, there, you don't have to go anywhere else. You know, the, the, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nostra Tate said that the fullness of the truth resides in the Catholic Church. So let's get that. We don't have to go, and I don't need to go sit at the feet of Buddha to learn how to pray, right? right. That's mm -hmm. not, so God bless good Buddhists, right? Mm -hmm. but, but that's not where I'm going to learn how mm -hmm. to know God. Mm -hmm. So that's why I created the site was to really uh, do that. And it's grown. I mean, it's, uh, we have readers in over 190 countries mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, I don't know how many authors write for us. We also publish uh, older works that are really faithful and relevant to our time. Uh, and we have uh, a, a, just an extraordinary group of people who come every day mm -hmm. hungry right. for the truth, just like I was. Some of them are Catholic and didn't get good catechesis. Right. They don't know where to find answers mm -hmm. for prayer. Some of them are Protestant at the Avil Institute. And ev right now in an Avil Institute course I'm teaching, I have an, epi a, uh, an Episcopalian pastor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, last course I taught, uh, this course is on Ignatian spirituality on the rules of discernment. Right. The last course I taught, I had a Lutheran right. pastor and right. others. You know, they're hungry for the sure. truth. Right. And boy, we've got an endless, uh, pure well of it in the Catholic Church. Well, why don't you address spiritual direction? Sure. You have a website, spiritualdirection.com. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is it? Who needs it? Yeah. And why should we get it? Yeah, I mean, sp we all have a fundamental problem because of concupiscence, because of brokenness, because of our own choices of sin, because of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and that is we have blind spots. You know, I don't know when the last time your taillight went out in your car, but I know you're not the one who discovered it. Somebody else had to tell you mm -hmm. yeah. that it was out because you can't, it's in a place you can't see. And so and, uh, Ka the, God the Father revealed through St. Catherine of Siena another truth related to this, and that is Jim and Joy, he designed you such that you were insufficient to get to to go to heaven. You know, you you needed help, and joy. You you and were boy, designed. Boy, am I helping him! Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've heard, I've heard a lot of stories, but but it's all good. So we're we're designed inherently insufficient, which mm -hmm. is a a good thing that that God did for us, so that we would be dependent on one another. We'd mm -hmm. love one another. Of course, we need priests to give us the uh, you know the Eucharist. We need priests to to bring us to reconciliation. So we need someone else. And so there, these are kind of fundamental reasons why we need typically a third person, another person in our life. The Holy Spirit is leading us. We need someone to help us to discern, to help us see patterns that we can't see, mm -hmm. blind spots, mm -hmm. to help us understand maybe someone who, you know, if you were going to go climb Mount Everest, and one time my dad wanted to climb Denali in Alaska with me, 
And and we would have never done that without a guide right. who had already done it. Right. Because you can die when you do that. Right. Now the spiritual life is way more serious, right? Mm -hmm. It's eternal consequences. Jesus said the narrow road is very difficult mm -hmm. in Matthew seven and hard to and hard to hard to traverse. And the wide road is is, is very easy. Mm -hmm. Well we need wisdom from the saints, from people who have more advanced prayer lives than we do, more advanced in virtue than we are, so that they can help us look at our lives and come to a better understanding of where am I, uh, what I would call a Godward self-awareness, mm -hmm. and then based on that, what's the next step? Well, how, it, how is it that I orient my heart to God and move, uh, make more progress spiritually? Mm -hmm. So that the purpose of spiritual direction, the director's role, is he's not the, he's not the uh, protagonist, his role is to help you listen better to the Holy Spirit and discern God's will. And by the way, did, I don't, did you ask me who needs spiritual direction? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I have, a, I have a test. Can I show you the test yeah. to discern how? Mm -hmm. So hold your fingers like this, mm -hmm. okay? And now bring up your wrist here and then put them right there on there. Do you, do you have a pulse? Yes, sir. Okay, so <laughs> if you have, that's how you know. <laughs> right. If you have a pulse, you need spiritual direction if you want to grow mm. in the interior life. Right. And you know, sometimes in spiritual direction, maybe your wife, or your mate has been telling you something for a long time and you're just not hearing it. Right. But then a spiritual director comes along who maybe you can hear it differently. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, oh, okay, well maybe that's something I really do need to address. And, really do need to work on. So is there something you want to share with me no, that you're learning? No, <laughs> no. You heard it all and I've heard it all. I mean, you know, I, I think you no know, it is. And I think what we bring to each other in marriage is we are iron sharpening iron. No doubt. And marriage can really help you grow spiritually. Yeah. My wife Stephanie is very holy, a wonderful, incredible woman. Mm -hmm. And it it's so frequent that we I think you talked about this at the opening of the show. Yeah. It's so frequent that we help lift one another up that, mm -hmm. you know, when the enemy's oppressing one of us, we, we follow St. Ignatius's wisdom, and that is we reveal the work of the enemy, mm -hmm. of feeling a little down, feeling a little oppressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We pray for one another. Sometimes mm -hmm. we put holy water on one yeah. another. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, we, we pray together every day, just mm -hmm. like you guys do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that spousal relationship, if you can't find a director, the spousal relationship doesn't make up for it, mm -hmm. but it can, it can really help when you're aligned spiritually and both <laughs> pursuing God together. Mm -hmm. Let's take an email. Okay, we're going to go straight to an email. It says, how do I know if I have a good match for a spiritual director? I've been to two different priests, but I haven't felt a click yet. Both are diocesan priests. Should I try elsewhere? And this is Scott from Minnesota. Depends why. Yes. You know, sometimes if you go to a director and they don't think you're wonderful and they make you uncomfortable, that's a really good thing. Yeah. My director, I picked her. She's the head of a religious order. And it's because she rebuked me at one point. I was in her presence and, and she did one of these to me. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you give spiritual direction? Mm -hmm. She said, yes, I was in between wow. at the time because I want someone who's not gonna make me comfortable. Right. I really actually want someone who is gonna help me to be holy, and, and that may be painful. Mm -hmm. She made me get, you know, do exercise, which saved my life. Right, uh, she, physical exercise. Physical exercise, right. because mm -hmm. I was too imbalanced. I, I don't, you know, I, I pray, you know, I, I love my wife and my kids, I pray and, every, and go to Mass, and I, that's it. All the rest is for the kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. And she's going, yeah, but you're going to die. And she was right mm -hmm. because we discovered I had a 99% a blockage in my uh, widowmaker artery. But it mm -hmm. was through obedience, right? through obedience, through spiritual direction. Because what did she say to you? Oh, she basically said, because she, she bugged me about it a few times, and I didn't really do it because I'm strong-willed, you know? No. And, and, she, right, and, she, and she said... Uh, the next time if I, I'm going to ask you under obedience, which means I'm in, you're in trouble. Right. And if you don't do it that time, you cut off the relationship. Well, mm -hmm. I thought, oh, okay, Lord, I'm being a hypocrite. I wrote in my book, you need to be docile to your mm -hmm. spiritual director. Mm -hmm. So I said, I got to go do this. I started to exercise mm -hmm. and by God's grace caught uh, a, a life threat, a, you know, life threatening situation mm -hmm. before it before it ended in my death. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so I always tell everybody, be obedient to your mm -hmm. spiritual directors, could yeah. save your life. Right. Now this, this sister who spoke to you and you said, I want you to be my, do you do spiritual direction? Was she somebody locally? Does your um, director have to be someone local that you can meet with personally? 
how does it work? She, Can you do a long distance thing? Uh, yeah, yeah, she's yeah. It's ours is long distance, but I've met okay. with her multiple times. She's her name's Sister Susan Piper. She may have been on EWTN, Apostles of the Interior Life. It's a wonderful group. They have a spiritual direction school in Kansas City, Kansas, under Archbishop Nauman. I do know he's been here talking about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we meet. Uh, we try to meet at least once or twice a year physically, but we talk on the phone every month. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there are some who I give spiritual direction over the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some who do it over Skype. But yeah, you don't have to be uh, in someone's presence. It's hard to find a good director, mm -hmm. so you got to try to make that work okay. when you when you have to. Do you help people to find a good director? You know, we, I would love to have that service yeah. on the site, and we'd love to build that up. And we're, we have some, a long-term project, but it takes a lot of vetting and, and capacity mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. But, but uh, did you go through what to look for in a director? Yeah, well, in my book and on the website, I outline how do you find one, what are the characteristics, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That's great. And what are the qualifications for a director? Well, number one, they've got to be holy. I mean, that's really the big issue. Every day they have to be in prayer. Uh, they have to have a significant life of virtue. They need to be themselves. All the same things that makes a person holy mm -hmm. must be true in a director. And then they need to be in spiritual direction, direction themselves. I would never go to a director who wasn't being directed, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. themselves. And then usually training is good as well. And uh, we can talk, if you want to talk about that after the break, I can... Uh, get, there are there are three school four schools in the United States okay. that, that that produce good let's, spiritual. Let's let's take a break. Speaking with Dan Burke, Catholic spirituality, spiritual direction. Don't go away. We'll be right back. home with Jim and Joy and you know I always tell you this that you are an important part of the family and because you're family we would love to have you come and join us live at home right here on our set you could have met Mr. Dan Burke today all you have to do is contact the EWTN pilgrimage department or you can do that by emailing pilgrimages at EWTN.com or give them a jingle at 205-271 2966. Alabama is wonderful. Amen. We would love to have you here in Irondale, Alabama. Because of all Dan's spiritual direction, you are probably in need of a spiritual retreat. Well, EWTN is a great place to come. Well, right now we're going to go straight to Joan, who is in Rome. Joan, what do you have for us today? Well, greetings from Rome. And you know what? What a fascinating topic you have today, spiritual direction. Now, of course, when I hear the word direction, I think of someone or someone helping me getting to where I want to go. And direction, of course, for us is we want to get to heaven. Now, spiritual direction, of course, can come about in two ways. There can be readings. There can be the Bible, the life of saints, the catechism of the Catholic Church. Or, of course, we can have a person, a priest, directing us, a spiritual director. But I have to tell you, one of my favorite people, the person who guides me, who leads me, who teaches me, was the first pope that I ever met, and that was John the 23rd. I, I think I've read everything that, that he's ever written. He had such humor and openness and generosity, and what drew people to him was his being drawn to people, his love of God, God's church, God's people. And, you know, for me, when you see and feel love, you yourself become more open to listening. You become more open to following directions, to being taught. Now, of course, John, Pope John, St. John, he gave spiritual direction by example as well. He guided people with humor and kindness, but also clarity and firmness. And he always thought of himself as a priest first, not a patriarch, uh, which, which he was at one point, or a diplomat. And, you know, his secretary sometimes got a little upset because the Pope made it clear he wanted everybody who asked for him to be admitted. And he, he said to them, you know, maybe we can teach them something. Maybe they even have to go to confession. Now, John called for the Second Vatican Council. He wanted to bring fresh air into the church. He wanted to give a new impetus to spiritual direction, whether it was for clergy or whether it was for the laity. 
And the funny thing is when the Cardinals of the Curia found out that he wanted to have a council, they said, Your Holiness, there is no way we are going to be ready by 1963. And the Pope responded, Well then, let's have the council in 1962. Now, I'm almost uh, out of time, but just give me a few more seconds to tell you one of my favorite stories of John. He was visiting the Roman hospital, which is actually blocks from where we are, the Roman hospital of Santo Spirito, or Holy Spirit. He walked in the front door, a nun approached him, the director of the hospital, and she said, um, Father, Holy Father, I am the superior of the Holy Spirit. And the Pope laughed and smiled. He said, you're very lucky. I'm only the Vicar of Christ. Well, there's a lot more stories about John. Maybe someday we can do a show on him. But for now, back to you. Thank you so much, Joan. What a solid and delightful sharing about spiritual direction and uh, John the 23rd, St. John. Your thoughts about her sharing? Well, she said a few things that are really important. One is, in order to properly grow spiritually, we need to do spiritual reading. And so we do that through uh, reading the lives of the saints or books that they've written. That's absolutely critical. That, would, that does what I would call tilling the soil of the soul mm -hmm. to make it more malleable so that when God plants the seed, that is, is very important for spiritual growth. And then spiritual direction with respect to having a person to help us, they really are inseparable. You need both. Uh, and without that outside person to kind of even help you to navigate, like, what are you reading in mm -hmm. Teresa and does it apply to you? Mm -hmm. Or John and uh, John of the Cross and how does it apply to you? You need that person to take that wonderful, rich truth that you get from Scripture and the saints and figure out how to apply it to your life. So mm -hmm. what she said was exactly on target. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were sharing earlier about some groups that people might be able to go to if they're looking for spiritual directors. Yeah, there are four schools that I've vetted in, de in depth and visited uh, in the United States. One is uh, uh, um, the uh, Heart of Christ uh, Spiritual Direction School in Ann Arbor, Michigan, run by uh, Tisa Fleming and Jeanette Barbicane, wonderful holy women. There is a school in Florida, in Clearwater, Florida, uh, Marian Servants of Divine Providence. Mm -hmm. I think their website is divineprovidence.org, and they give wonderful Ignatian uh, uh, spiritual direction training. There's a school in Kansas City, Kansas, as I mentioned, under Archbishop Nauman and Sister Susan Piper and the Apostles of the Interior Life. You can find out that uh, information about them at schooloffaith.com. And then the last one is the Lanteri Center in Denver, which is run by the Oblates of uh, of uh, the Virgin Mary, I think, the Father Gallagher, Timothy Gallagher's mm -hmm. order, who's a, who's, who writes about spiritual, right. direct, who writes mm -hmm. about uh, the discernment of spirits and how to pray uh, uh, in Ignatian prayer methods, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. So those are the four schools in the United States that we endorse because they're faithful to the magisterium. The, the Kansas City one's Carmelite, the rest are more Ignatian and it gives you a, a good, so if you're looking for a director, sometimes you can contact these schools right. mm -hmm. and they can give you grat n the names and numbers of graduates who are mm -hmm. open to taking directees. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about the Avila Institute because you may have people out here that are doing spiritual direction. What, what categories do you have of people that are doing spiritual direction and you're doing a lot of training in that area, what are you offering? Yeah, the Avila Institute was uh, formed really to adv to uh, advance uh, the mystical and ascetical patrimony of the church in an in institutional kind of setting. It's all online, so you don't have to, mm -hmm. that's why we have students in 25 countries. Right. So we have priests, religious, and laity all studying together, mm -hmm. deacons as well, and it's, and it's really beautiful to watch them become friends. Many of them feel isolated around the world, and they come to find the people who are like you guys, mm -hmm. they're on fire, yeah. And, yeah. The, and it helps to stoke yeah. the fire. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have graduate studies in spiritual theology, and we study all the major traditions. We have mm -hmm. courses that cover all the major traditions. And then we have what, what are called personal enrichment courses. So mm -hmm. those are for people who are busy, like you and I, mm -hmm. or people who do apostolates, um, uh, who don't have as much time to you know, do graduate level work, but who can, who can spend an hour a week in a lecture mm -hmm. and maybe an hour a week in reading and take those courses for uh, personal enrichment. So we offer all of that. You can find it at avila institute 
Com. All of our professors have, uh, in the graduate study, have um, they're approved by our bishop and and uh, have degrees from pontifical universities. They're theologians, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, it's it's just an incredible gift to be a part of. As well as coming to that site to yeah. learn, training, yeah. the fellowship that's there, are some of your staff, the teachers, going out? And sharing as well. Do they? Yeah, we, we uh, a lot of us travel and speak regularly. I mean, my my full time job is with the National Catholic Register, but uh, I have the great privilege of everywhere I go. Usually, all my speaking requests come from my books and that sort of thing, not from the register. Right. I, so, what I usually do is go out and promote EWTN and register, and then talk about the spiritual life. And then our professors do the same. Uh, Dr. Anthony Lillis, our academic dean, has an incredible book coming out, and it may be available any time now, mm -hmm. uh, called Fire From Above from mm -hmm. Sophia Institute Press, the same organization that's helping, uh, EW, partnering with EWTN right. to produce Mother Angelica's works. And uh, they, uh, they go out and speak and give retreats. We give retreats and that sort of thing. So it's, it, it's an amazing gift, really, to engage with people who, and it's one of the reasons I love you guys so much, is because you're always on fire for the Lord. <laughs> and, it, and it's an amazing gift to be able to serve uh, people who like that mm -hmm. because none of us are complete and perfect right. in all of our knowledge, right? right? Uh, you know, there's always someone that can help mm -hmm. us to grow spiritually. Mm -hmm. And then when you do that, when you when you throw that little coal into the fire and light, it, it mm -hmm. gets hotter and yeah. more pure. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a, a nuns who, who regularly dial into the courses which are taught online from Malta. Mm -hmm. and, wow. and you want to guess what time they are taking these courses? 2 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. Why are they doing that? One nun said that she was very tired. Her superior said, well, maybe you need to stop taking the courses. She said, no way. Mm -hmm. She said, this is what gives me the, the sustenance the that sure. I need to help the, serve mm -hmm. the poor right. and to, and to, and to uh, minister to the people I'm ministering yeah. to. And so it's, it's just, it's an extraordinary gift yeah. to be able to do this. Okay, so tell us, how do you find time to do all these things? Because you're doing lots of things. Well, you know, it's really God's hand. I mean, you guys have heard choice and, and the great ministry there. You kind of get this. But one, I don't have a TV. If you, want, if you don't have time to serve the Lord, I have mm -hmm. one tip for anyone. Stop watching Toss television. Toss the TV. Yeah. I haven't had one for more than a decade. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm here, of course, at EWTN the vast majority of the time. The, the news business never sleeps, and sometimes mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, God has brought wonderful volunteers and people who just love and serve the Lord and who are, who are good. And every day on the way into EWTN, I have a meeting mm -hmm. on the phone with folks around the world, around the country, who are doing these works. And then I come here and I work for EWTN on the mm -hmm. way home. Mm -hmm. I, we have meetings. Mm -hmm. And it just, it all works out. But we, mm -hmm. we just, uh, we rely on the Holy Spirit and uh, trust that he, he'll give us every day the resources we need to do what we do and to serve who we serve. And, and it all seems to be getting done. I mean, the mm -hmm. registers, uh, so, so, subscriptions yes, are going up yes, and yes. we're reaching millions of, uh, of people around mm -hmm. the world digitally. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so as long as that's happening and, yeah. and the home life is good, yes. which is a big test, right? Big test. Because if, yep. that, if that gets a little... It ain't real there. It ain't real anywhere. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a test if... Mm -hmm. if, if uh, that my wife keeps an eye on me, and um, and also is a great, you know we, we we keep an eye on one another, but that that's really how it gets done. It's the Holy right. Spirit blessing the mm -hmm. work and a lot of really wonderful people who give their lives away mm -hmm. to s help other people to heaven. Okay. Let's take We're going to go straight to an email. It says, "I feel discouraged when I see the lives of saints because they seem to have an unrealistic ability to practice virtue." How were some of these saints able to do these things, like live only off the Eucharist, hear confessions for hours at a time, or even resist certain temptations? If we are called to be saints, how can we obtain this heroic virtue? That's, virtue? A, gr that's a great question. This well, is from Rashid. The, the, the challenge is, we, when we read the lives of the saints, we read about where they ended up. Right. right? Mm -hmm. We didn't read about where they start. Right. If you want to be encouraged, go read Augustine's Confessions mm -hmm. or go read a little bit about the life of St. Ignatius. Mm -hmm. Both of them were exceedingly sinful men. Both of them, it seems, had, you know, it were involved with sexual sin. Mm -hmm. St. Mm -hmm. Ignatius, beyond that, was stealing. Mm -hmm. You know, and what these people did that, that made them saints is every day, Every day, every day, right. you said it at the beginning, they, they decided to give their lives to the Lord every day. 
And every minute they could give their life to the Lord made them holier and holier. Mm -hmm. And we have that available to us, but we can't look at where they ended up. Right. Sometimes we need Augustine's confessions, the lives of the saints uh, to, in their early life to watch how God had to change them and how, you know, Saint Ignatius had to have a cannonball blown through his leg and go into convalescence because he was, he was just this troublemaker mm -hmm. who's, you know, starting a war and, and his sister-in-law brought him books about Jesus and, and about good things mm -hmm. and, it, and he, you know, he began to become holy. But no, a, a lot of the saints didn't start out saints. They started out just where you are, where mm -hmm. we are, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's daily giving our hearts to the Lord in the sacraments and in wow. prayer. Dan, can you quickly mention the other two books that you got here? Sure. A couple of other These books that we do books. to help, the, help folks uh, come to uh, an appreciation of the saints is 30 Days with Teresa of Avila. Be nice. And this one, a lot of people read it, and it's, it's about her letters. Mm -hmm. And they're very practical. And she's mm -hmm. giving spiritual direction to her brother and to mm -hmm. other people mm -hmm. who are struggling with sin. And that's one that people have said, you know, I've really learned to love Teresa. She kind of intimidated me until right. I, read, and I read these stories. The, the one you mentioned, Navigating the Interior Life, already, but Finding God Through Meditation is by St. Peter of Alcantara. Mm -hmm. he, was a, he was her favorite, St. Teresa of Avila's favorite wow. spiritual director, mm -hmm. no incredibly way. holy man. Right. And this book is How to Deepen Your Life in Prayer. Absolutely a, an amazing text. Beautiful. Wonderful. Well, you can get all of those books at EWTNRC.com. Go to that website or you can call 1-800-854-6316. Go to the website spiritualdirection.com or to avala-institute.com. If you watch today and your spirit has been stirred and you're like, I want more of God. Yeah. That's the point. We all want more of God. But guess what has to go? More of us. It goes like this. More of Jesus, less of you. More of Jesus, less of you. The saints have paved the way, right? Absolutely. And so all we have to do is read them, call on them, ask them to pray for us that we too would have the courage, the strength, the grace, and the peace to finish like they finished. Well, keep it on EWTN. If you fall in love with Dan, like we are in love with Dan, just go to his website and look him up. You all have a blessed day. You're at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now.